world news tonight. Let the games begin. The Tokyo Olympics sets off with a bang at its opening ceremony. Yellow vests. France erupts into mass protests against the government's COVID guidelines. Origin outburst. China demands dignity following hazing remarks against the WHO. Virtual safaris. Animals in Africa now appear in front of visitors' eyes through the power of virtual reality. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. A very good evening and thank you for joining with us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage from Tokyo. The Tokyo Olympics is finally here and we are prepared with our resources to give you a unique coverage of the events. An estimated 85,000 people including athletes, officials and reporters are expected at the gathering over the weeks where the competition for the most coveted prizes will take place. Safety has been a key topic of concern all throughout the organizing days of the competition. The International Olympic Committee's COVID-19 protocol state that Olympic visitors must have two negative test results results in the 96 hours prior to their arrival in Japan and have another negative result on landing. Worries have arisen as to whether these measures are adequate. Reporting now from Tokyo is Rasida Chandradasan. Well, Shanali, finally we are here. After all those puzzles and the bustles and the initial postponement last year where they, where they postponed the Olympic for one year, we finally have the Olympics today. As we speak in front of the Olympic Stadium in Tokyo, you can see there's a massive crowd have gathered here to see, to, to take a glimpse of the Olympic events. And you can see the lots of crowd control here. And, uh, and also you can see the, this time the, the theme of the event is safety and the security. So you can see that the Japanese government and the organizing committee, they have put a massive police force so they tightly control the, everybody, all the streets, all the crowd control, the crowd access, everything is controlled here. So as we stand in front of the Olympic Stadium, around 1,000 to 2,000 invited dignitaries, mainly the foreign dignitaries, as well as the IOC officials, as well as obviously the government and the organizing committee are inside the Olympic Stadium now. And the Olympic event has officially started at 8 p.m. local time. As you can see, some huge noises surrounding the area where some of the protests, there are some ongoing protests where hundreds of people are protesting over the Olympics. And as our viewers would know, as we have given the updates, there is a massive uh, number of people, especially the Tokyo people, who are opposing the business as usual approach over the Olympics. They will prefer either a cancellation or a postponement. You can see there are people protesting just outside of the Olympic Stadium and these protests would expect it to continue until the, the opening ceremony is over. So you can see the police even they are now coming to us and they are asking us to move but we are not moving. We are, we are taking the shot here. Uh, the day earlier yesterday the Japanese football team officially started their games with a win over South Africa a 1-0 win. And very interesting, the Japanese who are usually very passionate about their football, they were not very over-enthusiastic or joyful over the victory. And in the post-press conference, the Japanese soccer team captain Yoshida-san pretty much sums up the reason. He said he feel for the South African team. As we know, the South African team had several quite positive cases and they were in the self-isolation just before the event, just before the game and some of the team members were cleared only three hours before the game. So that's why we were keep saying, and just like many others, who were saying that this could be the most unfairest Olympic ever, where mostly the foreign athletes, they have to serve like unfair quarantine rules, self-isolation, which definitely hamper their preparations. And even as we start the Olympics today, even today there were some COVID positive cases. An athlete from Czechoslovakia was tested positive and, is clo and they are close contacts in self-isolation as we speak now. 
but the Olympic rules regarding the self-isolation has given some flexibility. Rather than few days of self-isolation, the latest rules would say the athletes should spend, they have to take another test three to six hours before the event, and once they pass that test, they could compete in the event. So at least that is a good sign concerning uh, the athletes. So as we all said, and the Olympic Stadium inside the Games have officially started, we were expecting the fireworks, but it did not happen now. We might have it today, we might not have it today. So as you can see, the finally the Olympic has arrived. So within two, three weeks, we expected to give you a full coverage, obviously from outside of the stadiums and even the, best, uh, even, uh, the places they have the events to all our Derna viewers. Over to you, Shanali. Thank you. Thank you. That was other than a world news special correspondent Rasita Chandra Dasa reporting from Tokyo in Japan. The director of the opening ceremony of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics has been dismissed, organizers said following news reporters about his past comments on the Holocaust. Tokyo 2020 President Seiko Hashimoto told a briefing that Kentaro Kobayashi had been dismissed because of his past comments that made fun of the tragedy a day before the Games were due to start. Kobayashi's firing comes after a public outcry over a joke he made about the Holocaust as part of his comedy act in the 1990s, which recently resurfaced in domestic media. Hashimoto said the organizing committee has been looking into how the opening ceremony will be held. Kobayashi's dismissal was the latest in series of scandals that have been a headache for organizers and put a sharp focus on Japan, particularly around social issues. Days earlier, musician Keigo Oyamada stepped down as composer of the opening ceremony after all reports of his bullying and abusive behavior resurfaced. He had come under first after comments that he had made in interviews in 1990s began circulating online. His resignation announcement on July 19th came just hours after organizers said that they wanted him to stay on. In March, the creative head of the Tokyo Games, Hiroshi Sasaki, resigned after making a derogatory comment about a popular female female entertainment. Hashimoto, a pioneering female lawmaker and seven-time Olympian who replaced Yoshiro Mori as president in February after he was forced to resign for making sexist remarks, also told the news conference that she was aware that the series of recent scandals had turned some people against the ceremony and may have discouraged some from watching the event. Hashimoto also told reporters that she had no intention of resigning after the latest scandal when asked by the reporter. She said she would maintain her role through the games to avoid further disruption. An animated film called Tomorrow's Leaves, which celebrates the Olympic values, was released the day of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic opening ceremony. The film shows five children from diverse lands who are dispatched as envoys to find out why the annual arrivals of leaves carry a message of concern. The children, each of whom has their own strengths and weaknesses, travel to a distant land guided by tiny spirits. They overcome the physical challenges of rough terrain and difficult conditions by working together in order to find the source of the message and restore peace in the world. The animation aims to spread the Olympic values of hope, peace and solidarity while highlighting the environmental issues facing the planet. The film was commissioned by the Olympic Foundation of Culture and Heritage and produced by the Academy Award-nominated Yoshi Aki Noshimura of Studio Ponok. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon on the other side with more world news. Welcome back. Two years after the first Yellow West protest, one of their major figures, Jerome Rodriguez, is trying to reinvigorate the movement pulled back together in opposition to COVID-19 health pass. To give us an update on this, we have other than the World News Special Correspondent Chetana Dharmaratha joining us now from Paris in France. Chetana? Yes, Shanali. Protests in France against the COVID-19 health pass are being invigorated by familiar face. Jerome Rodriguez was a major figure in the Yellow West protest two years ago, which first sought to challenge President Emmanuel Macron's rule before fizzling out. His bedded profile is well known in the Yellow West protest, and now he is on a mission to try and get the movement back together. They are taking aim at the government's newly proposed COVID-19 rules, which some say are an attack on the liberty. 
Macron's administration has submitted legalization to parliament which will stop people entering restaurants and bars without a health pass, showing they are vaccinated, having had a pre recent negative test or immunity from COVID-19. Last weekend, police estimated that 100,000 people joined protests against the government's measure. On the other hand, Macron's allies says the protests should not obscure what they say is silent majority who support the measures. Yellow West have called to protest again over the weekend. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was other than a world news special correspondent Chetana Dharmaratna reporting from Paris in France. China said a WHO proposal to audit Chinese labs as part of further investigation into the origins of the coronavirus pandemic showed disrespect and arrogance towards science. The World Health Organization said a second stage of the international probe should include audits of the Chinese labs amidst increasing pressure from the United States of an investigation of the Wuhan Institute of Virology. A flat-out rejection from Beijing. Authorities in China ruled out a WHO plan to examine if COVID-19 leaked from a lab, suggesting the theory itself is flawed. Earlier this year, a team of experts from the World Health Organization traveled to Wuhan, China to trace the origins of COVID-19. After a 12-day fact-finding mission, which was tightly controlled by Beijing, they concluded it was, quote, likely to very likely the virus spread from animals to humans, and the lab leak theory was deemed extremely unlikely. This was not the key or main focus of uh, the joint studies. Uh, it, uh, it did not uh, uh, receive the same depth uh, of attention and work as uh, uh, the other hypotheses. The WHO's findings raised eyebrows in the scientific community, with many questioning why the lab leak theory was so quickly dismissed. Last week, the WHO director admitted the fact-finding mission earlier this year fell short of expectations. There was a premature push to, um, uh, you know, uh, especially uh, reduce one of the uh, options, like the lab theory. I've worked in the lab, and lab accidents happen. It's common. In recent months, Western states have demanded more transparency from China in order to probe the origins of COVID-19. This as the world grapples with the ongoing effects of the coronavirus pandemic. U.S. President Joe Biden, meanwhile, has also ordered his intelligence services to conduct an investigation into the origins of the virus. Philadelphia and the New Orleans are the latest cities in the U.S. to now recommend mask wearing indoors even if people are vaccinated. This is an issue now raising attention in the White House as well. The Delta variant mask debate. Tonight, President Biden says he has talked to his COVID experts about mask rules for vaccinated Americans. But so far, no change is planned. 25 person group we put together are looking at all the possibilities of what's happening now. The CDC director has a message for the fully vaccinated. Mask wearing is up to you. You may choose to add an extra layer of protection by putting on your mask, and that's a very individual choice. But in COVID hotspots, some local officials push for broader mask wearing. Authorities in New Orleans and Philadelphia now recommending masks indoors for the fully vaccinated. Today, Atlanta Public Schools said masks will be mandatory for all students and staff, regardless of vaccine status. While urging more Americans to get the shots, last night, President Biden made this claim. You're not going to you're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. But that's not true. There are breakthrough COVID cases after vaccination. The president was more precise today. If you are vaccinated, you have over a 98 percent chance of never catching the virus at all. The United States imposed sanction on a Cuban security minister as an interior minister special forces unit for alleged human rights abuses in a crackdown on the anti-government protests earlier this month. After voicing support for Cuban anti-government protesters, the U.S. government on Thursday imposed sanctions on senior Cuban officials the White House blames for human rights abuses. The move marked the first concrete steps by President Joe Biden to pressure Cuba's communist government. 
Thousands of Cubans staged protests a week ago to demonstrate against an economic crisis that has brought shortages of basic goods and power outages. Hundreds of activists were detained. Among them were actor and playwright Junior Garcia, who spoke this week while under house arrest. The U.S. Treasury Department said that the sanctions had been placed on the Minister of the Revolutionary Armed Guards and on an Interior Ministry security unit Washington blames for the crackdown. The Cuban government has blamed the protests mostly on what it calls U.S.-financed, quote, counter-revolutionaries exploiting economic hardships. U.S. officials have acknowledged that the targeted sanctions may not have much impact. Cubans rarely have U.S. financial dealings and seldom travel to the United States, limiting the practical impact of such measures. Madagascan plot this week arrested six people, including a foreign national, on suspicion of plotting to kill the president. After months of investigation, Andrew Rogelina was sworn in as the president of the Indian Ocean Island country in 2019 after a hard-fought election and a constitutional court challenge from his rival. An assassination plot foiled against Madagascar's president. 47-year-old Anj Rajwal, in power since 2019, is no stranger to the country's political scene, rising up the ranks over the years. Since gaining independence from France in 1960, the island has suffered from political instability and a series of coups. News of the assassination attempt comes months after the president was accused of cracking down on freedom of the press. This over coverage of the coronavirus pandemic and the famine in the country's south. Back in April, nine political radio and television programs were blocked on the grounds they were likely to disrupt public order and security, as well as undermine national unity. Last month, an assassination plot on the president's right-hand man was thwarted. Some fear an attempt on Rajwal's own life could result in him further increasing his grip on power. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Haitians took to the streets of the capital to protest President Jovenel Moise's assassination after a mass was held in his honour. Protests set tyres on fire and closed roads to demand justice for Moise's death. The South African government said that writing in the country this month has claimed 337 lives, marking a further jump in the death toll from 276 announced the previous day. Venice avoided being named a World Heritage Site in danger by UNESCO just weeks after Italy moved to ban large cruise ships from sailing into the city centre. With more people opting for takeout and online shopping amid a surge in COVID-19 cases, recycling centres in Taiwan are struggling to cope with packaging waste that threatens to undo years of efforts to reduce the consumption of single-use plastic. The Italian government, looking to contain a fresh surge in coronavirus cases, announced that people would need to have proof of immunity to access an array of services and leisure activities. The COVID Green Pass is a digital or paper certificate that shows if someone has received at least one jab, has tested negative or has recently recovered from COVID-19. Samoa's Court of Appeal ruled that a makeshift swearing in ceremony for the country's next government was legal, officially installing Samoa's first female prime minister. Finally tonight, there's another way to encounter exotic animals and experience the majestic landscapes of Africa without actually going there. Groundbreaking technology has brought a wild safari adventure to Atlanta at an eye-popping immerse attraction. This is Illuminarium, where a room displays a massive projection into towering walls with real moving images of African plains. The CEO of the company says the exhibition aims to do things people dream about. According to the CEO, the amazing thing about the Illuminarium is the technology and how they use it. When visitors walk in through the safari, they see it with their own eyes just like they would see it if they were there. It's already drawing massive crowds and the exhibit is considering expanding to other locations. The next exhibition is to open in Las Vegas in December. Well, that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again on Monday with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Until then, stay safe and have a great weekend.